Hello friends, it's Brittany. I'm sitting in my backyard and I would like to share a book with you. Do you remember this book? It's called Hummingbird. <laughs> it's written by Nicola Davies and illustrated by Jane Ray. I was excited to read this book in my backyard because yesterday I started seeing hummingbirds that look just like this in my yard. I wonder if you've seen any yet. Let's begin. Oh, look at the pictures. Ruby-throated hummingbirds are tiny. They weigh less than a nickel. But every spring they fly up 2,000 miles from Mexico and Central America to spend the summer in the United States and Canada where they build their nests and have their babies. In the fall, they fly all the way back again to spend the winter where it's warm. Here's the ruby-throated hummingbird. And here's the map. This is the United States and Canada. And here's Mexico and Central America. So they fly from here, Mexico and Central America, up to where we live, all the way up here to Washington this time of year and stay for the summer. <sighs> Granny's in her garden with her granddaughter. Keep still, she whispers to the little girl, and they'll come. The child holds her breath, and they do come. Their feathers flash in the slants of light. Their wings make the sound of their name, beating fast as thought. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom is the word for hummingbird in several languages used in South and Central America. They'll be gone soon, Granny says, flying north like you. The little girl looks sad, so Granny kisses her and says, maybe they'll visit you in New York City. Later, on the plane, the girl wonders how something so small could fly so far. Down on the dark sea, a sailor has company at last. A hummingbird is sleeping in the rigging. At dawn, it wakes up and flies away, tiny and fearless, heading for the land. It says hummingbirds lose half their body weight when they fly north over the Gulf of Mexico in one long trip. Can you find the hummingbird in this picture? Yep, there it is, right on his rig of his boat. Hummingbirds feed on nectar, a sugary liquid that comes from flowers, but they need protein from insects too, so bug dispensers give them a balanced diet. Out on the veranda, everything is ready. The nectar feeders are filled and tiny flies buzz in the bug dispenser. Just after dawn, the hungry guests arrive for breakfast. The sisters laugh as they remember how their daddy used to say, hummingbirds need meat and potatoes, same as we do. <laughs> pictures are so beautiful. Spring sweeps up country. Flowers open, bee balm and scarlet sage, trumpet, honeysuckle and cardinal flower. Insects zoom. 
The hummingbirds ride the green waves, zigzagging from one pool of buzz and blossoms to the next. By April, which was last month, because today we're in May, the hummingbirds are as far north as Washington, D.C. And in May, they arrive into southern Canada. Just right around now. A young man sets aside his school books when a hummingbird won't share flowers with a bumblebee. He laughs aloud and sends a photo to his mother of the little bird, too angry for its size. The family leaves their dinner table and goes outside to see hummingbirds sipping from the feeder they made out of a plastic cup and filled with sugar syrup. You could make a hummingbird feeder out of recycling at home. Hummingbirds know exactly where they're going and when they get there, they settle in. The male chases other hummingbirds away so that his family doesn't have to share their nearby flowers. The female makes a nest with lichen, spider silk, and thistle down. It holds her two eggs tight, but stretches as the babies grow and grow and grow. Hummingbird nests are the size of half a walnut shell. Half of a walnut shell. Can you imagine that? In the late summer, a little girl is walking down to the park. There's something in the grass white, too small to cap her littlest finger. There's only one thing it could be. Somewhere up among the trees and green, there's been a visitor from Granny's garden. Do you see what she's pointing to? What could it be? <laughs> I wonder if we're thinking of the same thing. Days are getting shorter. Soon the bugs and nectar will be nipped by frost. Hummingbirds must fly south. The trip is long and hard for such little bodies and many of them won't reach their destination. So it looks like the eggs have hatched. You guessed it, she found an egg in the park. Roads, houses, and cities built by humans mean that there are now fewer places for hummingbirds to refuel on the trip. That's why many people have hummingbird feeders in their home, outside. <gasps> Granny is in her garden with a package in her lap inside a tiny eggshell wrapped in cotton balls, a letter and a newspaper clipping. As she reads about how hummingbirds have nested for the first time in Central Park, which is in New York City. There's a telltale sound around the flowers. Zazoom! Zazoom! And jewel feathers flash in the light. Who's back? <laughs> And that's the end. There's more than 300 types of hummingbirds. Wow. And this 
is telling about how the, they migrate flying for more than 500 miles in one stretch. Wow. And these birds can live to be nine years old. Wow. Oh, what a lovely book. Such a beautiful book. Thanks for joining me for a book gathering, friends. We'll see you next time. Keep your eyes out for a hummingbird. <laughs> They're pollinating the flowers, sipping the nectar. <laughs> Have a great day.